Ever learn to pack a pipe directly from a modern day pipe smoking legend? <laughs> I have. But first, real quick, I want to take a minute to highlight something very special to me. As you will see intermittently throughout the video and in the many videos to come, I was recently sent this extraordinary pipe packing board from a Mr. Leo Romanelli. Leo reached out through Instagram explaining that he was first a huge fan of the channel, thank you dearly Leo, and that he noticed that I've only been working with this little leather dish that you often see. He then explained the amount of joy and pride it would give him if I had let him make me a pipe smoking board. I absolutely agreed and we worked together to design this piece before you. This thing is incredible. Shipped all the way from Italy, it finally got here and it's now a part of my daily ritual. Before my morning commute to work around 0430, I pack all my pipes using this board. It's a phenomenal surface for ripping, tearing, and cutting. I usually just drop the tobacco on the board and then begin the pack but it can also be a great tool, arguably now my best tool, for drying some of the, the super wet aromatics before a smoke. It has slots for tools, lighters, pipes, and then yes, the primary surface for your leaf. To top it off, this small cutout is paramount for putting back every last scrap of leaf that failed to make into the chamber. Within this set, you'll also find an awesome leather pipe holder, a wooden tamper, and a wooden scraper, great for the post-smoke ream. I am in love with this set, and I'm so proud to present it to you. I want to thank Mr. Romanelli so deeply, a kind and honest man who added that he's not a woodworker by trade, but a man who enjoys, at heart, the art, ritual, and philosophy of the smoking pipe. He endeavored to bring about this stellar piece to aid in this delightful hobby, and I assure you that he succeeded. You can reach him on Instagram, linked below, to order one for yourself. He sells this complete set for 40 euro or about $42. That's shipped right to you. And I'll tell you right now, that, that barely covers the cost of materials and shipping. Mr. Leo Romanelli is here to increase and spread the joy of pipe smoking. A true and great-hearted gentleman. Thank you, Leo. My warmest regards. Now, on to the show. Well met, friends. My name is Adam, and this is Get Piped, where we, well, love to pipe. And today's piping is all about the unbearably heavy information unless you're me contained confined held within this melon head and if you're coming from the get pipe podcast welcome 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 i know you've been waiting for this information for quite some time it's been a couple weeks but uh thanks for bearing with me if you're from youtube and youtube only then i highly encourage you to start tuning in to my weekly pipe smoking audio show the get pipe podcast it's on all major hosting sites and we have episodes airing every single thursday without fail a few weeks ago on the show i discussed my chicago pipe show journey over a two-part series, and in one of the episodes, I explained how Cornell and Deal's head blender, Jeremy Reeves, gave me a masterclass lesson on pipe packing and pipe smoking. The background behind this story is that I had asked him for his recommendations on some Burley blends, one of my favorite tobaccos. I explained how I frequent the Burley, but I'm always looking to expand my palate and, and understand more blends. I say this because I struggled with 8-State Burley. You can read my full thoughts on the blend now, which is exclusively from my article published with the Briar Report Online Pipe Magazine. But the bottom line is that I felt this blend had little to no flavor. I was puzzled. I didn't know if it was me or the blend. I just didn't love it. I, didn't, I couldn't really find much flavor. To be honest, I was feeling like a rookie pipe smoker again, despite all the Burleys I do enjoy. Well, master blender Jeremy Reeves recommended several Burleys to try. I picked them all up on Saturday of the show. But it was that second day, Sunday, when Jeremy walks up to me and asks me about the blends. I tried Savinelli's Jupiter that night prior, as per his recommendation. But I told him I really needed a clearer space. You know, not a smoking tent with filled with 200 plus smoking men and women to try and pull and understand some of those flavors. It's just not really practical. 
So he told me to reach out, which I let him know that I've of course would, certainly. I also added that I may ping him for a tip or two when I do, and it was at that moment that he stopped. Jeremy, master blender, stopped and saw an opportunity of mentorship. Jeremy Reeves, who is actively meandering the Chicago Pipe Show, his time off, his time to enjoy the show, stopped to ask me about my packing method. Explain to me in the best way possible your process or processes for packing and smoking your tobacco pipe. That's what he said to me. I proceeded to explain the method that you can find here in one of my older videos, somewhere up here. And then Jeremy Reeves went on to tell me how it was not only wrong, but very wrong. <laughs> no, but he did offer a different, better way of doing things. We know there are many roads that lead to success and, and pipe smoking and chamber packing is no exception. But mayhap the technique of a legendary tobacconist is a tad better than others. I'm inclined to agree, but I'll let you try and be the judge. Essentially, this was the masterclass he gave me. An uninterrupted 10 minute lesson. I'll do my very best to honor that class he gave. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. You do know how long it is. You can look down. I can, I'm recording. Tobacco is a very delicate plant. Smoking it for flavor is a very deliberate action. If you truly desire to get the most out of the tobacco, this slow and steady approach is paramount. Jeremy began by explaining that you want to tend your tobacco, meaning we start by prepping it in a dish or a bowl or a piece of paper or the literal table if you're still a mad lad. If it's cake, start ripping, a plug, start slicing, a flake, start rubbing, ribbon, shag, cube, or ready rubbed, then just start prepping immediately. We prep the tobacco by generously, well, playing with it. Like a woman who loves when you play with their hair, you want to play with the tobacco. Not like a child in his G.I. Joe action figure, not a doll, but like a cat making biscuits in his five-star bakery. So you literally move your fingers through the tobacco. This achieves two purposes, the first being that it oxygenates, oxygenates, oxygizes, it's not oxidizes, it gives oxygen to the, the stuff, it's just oxygen, oxygen oxygen you know what i mean it's good it's good for you giving the tobacco time to breathe and unlocking some of those deep deep buried flavor notes and also to begin the separation process those are those are the two the life of a tobacco blend is bleak it grows in a field it's cut dried the heck out of uh, probably hung somewhere maybe over a fire and thrown in casks pushed together yeah, and then it's shredded and blended in a dark tin sealed away until your discerning pipe smoker cracks that tin. It's all bunched up, crammed, and it doesn't know how to be put into a bowl properly. Well, thanks to Jeremy Reeves, I'm a learned man, and we want to put that tobacco in the chamber properly. It's a very specific way. To achieve this, we start by separating the components that make up this blend, well, in terms of size. Like a reverse fire, we want to start by using some kindling. We get the kindling, smaller but not the smallest fragments of tobacco, by sifting our hands through that tobacco, separating the big chunks, stems, blocky, chunky pieces, and, and we put that to the side. That's gonna be our wood. We don't need that right now, and we continue to sift and play with the tobacco. We start to get very, very small shreds and, and remnants of tobacco to fall, leaving us with the kindling in our hands. We then separate those pieces. We want to collect all of those average sized pieces in, in, a, in a pile. This can go on over the course of two, three, four, five, six minutes. But at some point we've separated the big pieces, our logs, we've separated the kindling, our typical ribbon sized strands. And by default, we're left with the tinder, the smallest, shreddiest, miniest pieces and remnants of tobacco. This whole process might start with just running our fingers through the tobacco as we read a book or scroll on our phones or, or watch get piped on youtube but then it moves toward the calculated separation of the tobacco by way of size we have our three piles yes but now what well we build a fire slightly weirdly we begin with the medium sized pieces our kindling we put that kindling at the bottom of the bowl this should be a majority of the tobacco We don't want to push down with our finger, at least as best as possible. I know there's some really narrow tankards out there, but just bear with me. We achieve this by filling, then folding the outside shreds in. 
pushing from the sides. We continue this process, and once the bowl is filled, generally halfway to three quarters, we move to the chunky tobacco pieces, the, the logs, if you may. Same method. Drop them in, let gravity do most of the work, and push from the sides gently. At any point, we can use our, our pad, the pad of our thumb, to kind of press it down, but we're not throwing a finger down into the bowl. I might slightly disagree with this idea because so many pipes are, are narrow, tall, and command a pushdown. But take a look at what you've got, in, in, but in the spirit of Mr. Jeremy Rees, master class will, will avoid it here. As for our logs, they should just fall into place, taking up the rest of the bowl size. That's when we again use the pad of our thumb to press down on the bowl. The tobacco now is just barely under the rim. We end this packing process by the dropping of our little pile of tinder on top. And that is the proper pack. Now when you draw, assuming you didn't press hard, you get just the right resistance needed to enjoy your pipe without any of the fragments being sucked down through the stem and into your throat and mouth. The worst. As for the lighting, it should be straightforward, right? Well, no. Not for me, anyway. When I light my tobacco pipes, I typically throw the flame in the tobacco, trying to evenly spread that flame across the bowl, charring that first layer of tobacco. I'd also be drawing super deep with the, with the intent of, of pulling the flame downward in order to prep the bottom for the embers to come as I tamp the tobacco downward. Well, friends, my mind was blown once more as Mr. Jeremy Reeves explained to me that he does not even touch his flame to the tobacco. Jeremy will put the flame as close as possible and draw so delicately as he neatly moves his lighter or match around. The residual heat is just enough to burn the tobacco. It's a patient man's game for sure, but it's, it's really interesting. Avoiding flame directly to the tobacco, we preserve some of the flavors, the, the minute details in the blend, that are burned off from the fire. I must say, he's certainly correct. When I came home and smoked some of those burlies, I really do believe I was tasting something slightly deeper. Perhaps a placebo on the mind, but I do enjoy this deliberate process. This is a rather time-consuming process, but it forces us to slow down and think. Concentration is all too often taken from us. With this Jeremy Reeves method, it's critical. Can't say I'll do this every time, but I'll certainly plan it for the finer tobaccos and maybe my quiet smokes on the porch. Those days where you unplug from socials, grab a book, and maybe pour yourself a, a wee dram of spirit and a puff, puff, puff away. Thank you guys once more for watching. I, I really do appreciate your time. Consider the subscribe option and leaving any feedback. You can hear much more about the fantasy side of pipe smoking on my pipe smoking podcast, cleverly named the Get Pipe Podcast, which is available on all platforms. We have a number of engaging series from Pipe Dreams, where a scenario of like, say, being a pirate on the Black Sea under a black flag sailing towards plunder is presented to me. And I come up with the best pipe and tobacco to fit that scene. 
or maybe our one smoke ring to rule them all series. A series which relates to anything and everything toking and pipe smoking. From our ideas on what the dwarves would smoke to the actual origins of the weed, the discussions about rangers uh, and their go-to blends. Many, many more that I can encourage you to go check out. And, and while you're at it, drop a follow on Instagram. As you know, get underscore piped. Uh, join the Discord. It's a great place. Community Discord. We do a pipe night on Friday. Yeah, big community. I'm, I'm so thankful for the Get Pipe community. You guys are freaking awesome. So cheers. Until the next piping, I'm out.